Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for Amazon's Web Services reInvent Conferences of the Cube. Our second year covering blanket coverage of what's going on at the show. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. It's the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events, we extract a signal from the noise. We have a hot uh, company called DataZoo here. Bill Simmons, the CTO founder, and uh, Kestra Kasura, VP of Technology. Welcome to the Cube. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, guys, real time, in the cloud, data driven, these are the buzzwords that everyone's marching to right now. Yep. Because it's pretty obvious, the shift's happening. Yep. So you guys are a uh, uh, great company doing some really cutting edge stuff in digital, the digital transformation's happening. So I want to get your take uh, on what's happening here, but first, tell the folks, Bill, what you guys are doing as a business. When you started, how many employees, what's your product, and why is the cloud important to you guys? So DataZoo uh, builds a marketing cloud for brands and agencies. We provide uh, three major kinds of products. We manage data, uh, so that's ad impressions and clicks and uh, activities on websites, uh, but also uh, can manage sales data, ERP data, CRM data. Uh, we can overlay that data and produce insights and analytics. Uh, we use, uh, I think what's unique about DataZoo is we're not just an analytics company. Uh, we're built from the ground up to take action on the big data uh, immediately. So we have a real time uh, media buying system that is fed by the insights and analytics to buy media in an optimized way. So we help marketers engage with their customers and increase marketing ROI. And what's the number one concern for your customers that you guys are solving? When you say ROI, that's yes. ad spend or money that they're spending and getting the results. What are they looking for? Have you learned anything around I mean, marketing cloud is pretty obvious, and it's still early. People, it's not a lot of stuff out there. Even Oracle says they have marketing cloud, but I mean, right. come on. It's yep. not really marketing cloud. They have a little quit, some other things. That's one set of solutions, but no one really has a real-time digital in social and in web. So they got the, you know, digital's proven, right? I mean, we all yep. know the web. Right. Websites, AdWords, banner ads, click yep. stream data, all right. that stuff. And now it's transferring over to whole nother world. Yeah, the, you know, DataZoo manages uh, media allocations to online display, mobile, video, um, you know, YouTube pre-roll, social, Twitter, uh, you know, even traditional TV is going digital. Uh, we're able to run advertisements on addressable TV through set-top boxes, uh, more precisely targeted. Um, do people plug into your platform as a service, or is it service based? Yeah, we're, we're a platform as a service. Uh, you can subscribe, you know, subscription pricing as a marketer, um, and we can help you manage your data, build custom dashboards, but uh, help you manage all your marketing investment. There's an old saying in marketing that um, half, half the advertising dollars are wasted, but we don't know which half. Well, DataZoo believes there's no reason for that. 100%. It should be 100% should be wasted. No, <laughs> 100% should be effective. No, of course. No, but that, that's the point. Big data and connected internet, internet of things which people are part of and machines, right. everything's measured. Yes. So you should technically have 100% visibility, right. yeah. which There's, means you might suck 50% of the time, or you might be good, and so you can work on that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, so you know, marketing. I didn't say suck, but you know what I'm yeah. saying? If it's not effective. Yeah at least you know which half is not effective, right. and you can make adjustments tactically. Right. That's right, you yeah. Spin. So, you know, marketing has traditionally been very much an art form. I, I think there's still a big element of art in it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of very creative work done. Uh, however, um, the allocation of, you know, media to different channels and what amounts in which regions to which audiences, that's the kind of work that can be done scientifically and can be done by computers. And so that's, that's what DataZoo supplies. That, that should technically help the creative process. That, if you kind of know what you're targeting in these, they say omni-channel, yeah. um, and it's a long tail distribution. An advertiser could have, you know, you know make big, broad audiences and then go down into the yeah, slice and dice. That's exactly it. I mean, the, the data that you collect while running 
digital media is can be considered research. So you can run four or five, ten different kinds of messages, and then you can overlay it with data to know what kinds of people are reacting to which kind of messages. And that can inform your strategy going forward. So if you're selling a car and you find you thought it would be appealing to you know young males, but it actually is appealing to uh, older females, uh, that can inform your creative strategy going forward. That's the kind of uh, benefit you get from data-driven so advertising. So who, who's backing you guys? Which VCs are you guys venture-backed? Yeah, we're, our initial investors were Flybridge and Atlas, mm -hmm. um, and then Menlo Partners. Which partners from Atlas? Uh, Jeff Fagnan. Okay, Jeff's Atlas, cool, and Chris and, Lynch. Uh, Jeff Busking from, from Flybridge, and uh, John Jarvey from Menlo, and then we have uh, Thompson uh, Financial is also an investor. How many rounds have you done? Uh, four rounds of funding. Well, that's a lot of cash. Yeah. How much have you raised? Uh, you know, tens of millions. <laughs> oh, okay, so not, not Silicon Valley standards. Not right. like, I mean, I was just talking to Illumio, and I think I saw the VCs huddling around them. I'm like, Docker's yeah. had three rounds of funding in eight months. That's okay. nice. <laughs> like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> yeah. No, we're, uh, you know, we're operating um, and uh, earning, earning money. Uh, we're investing in growth. That's the um, East Coast way. Yeah, yeah, it's the East Coast way. Provide value, get paid for it. We build businesses. Yeah, I think marketing cloud's very hot. I'm big, I, everyone who watches theCUBE knows that uh, you know, I go crazy over this whole digital transformation. I truly believe that the shift is happening, the dollars are coming in, and there's really no vehicles for billions to be right. spent. Right. So I think there's a technical challenge going on in the market. I'd like to get your perspective on this because this money there, it's just, it's just being blocked. There's a big rock in the river that's just yeah. stopping it right. because, you know, I mean, they can do little stuff here. Facebook fan pages, Twitter, you know, sponsorships. But in terms of real ad spend at scale, yeah. right, what are you guys doing technically to, say I'm a, I'm a big brand, Pepsi or someone, Coke, I got $10 million for a campaign, which is about a number, you know, Paul yeah. McCartney might do a concert, you know, whatever, right. and I want to roll in, I want mobile, I want activation, I want real time, and I also want activation through display ads. What do you do? What do you guys do for, uh, to, how yeah. do you guys help them? So, we already have tremendous scale just through traditional digital. We evaluate 30 trillion ad buying opportunities a month across the traditional digital channels like banner ads and mobile ads and, and online video. Uh, however, uh, one of the big areas of growth is uh, digital addressable TV. I think that's going to be a huge growth market. Uh, a lot of homes in the U.S. and around the world have set-top boxes. Uh, those those set-top boxes have hard drives. Uh, HD advertisements can be stored there and uh, placed on, on those devices uh, in a targeted way. So you can buy uh, digital advertising at a massive scale now. So guess tell about the technology. You guys all in the cloud, were you on-premise? So we have a, a hybrid model. Uh, we have the real-time bidding engine on, uh, on, uh, in the colo, and then we have the rest of the big data platform uh, hosted in the Amazon cloud. And which portion is in Amazon? You said big data? Yeah, it's the big data piece, that basically the data platform. So for the insights? For the insights and the data collection, the logging systems, they're all uh, uh, in the cloud. Machine learning. Machine learning. And, and that's the because it's variable, you're managing it, what's the reasoning behind yeah, that? Yeah, so the big reason is that um, when our business is cyclical, so it's actually uh, uh, goes to the roof during these uh, holiday months and then January slows down and then it's pretty cyclical. So um, uh, the cloud gives us the ability to scale up and down, it gives us the ability to elasti elastically scale up and down, and then also uh, the, the automation is, uh, is something that we uh, hook on you know, quite a, uh, a lot. Uh, so you know, we have built-in uh, self-healing systems that can recover themselves you know, when there's issues and things like that. And we also uh, uh, use a whole host of services in Amazon. Like uh, the Kinesis is the more recent one we started using. And our log collection goes to the Kinesis systems um, uh, into, into the uh, S3. So digital transformation is huge, so how are you guys dealing with the real time? Because that's really a big deal. So I have historical data, so that's passive monitoring. Yeah. In the active part of the marketplace where there's you know, point of purchase, point of intent, yeah. um, that's a hot area. Are you guys doing anything in that area? Yeah, so our platform is capable of ingesting the real time data. We use tools like Kinesis to help us do that. Uh, we can immediately, upon ingestion of that data, take action. Uh, it may be you increase marketing, shut down marketing. For example, if you are marketing to somebody 
uh, and you want it to be very effective, if they've already bought something, it's time to stop, right? By uh, taking in some of this real-time point-of-sale data, you could do that. You can spend that money elsewhere, find another new customer. Yeah, retargeting has gone through really kind of a bad rap because that's a real simple technology. I went to a website, therefore now I see the ad, but they don't have the intent. There's been a lot of customer dissatisfaction. Now the numbers are off the chart on retargeting. So like, it looks good on paper, but the user experience satisfaction is pretty sucky because, you know, I mean, I went to a website to check on Hilton in Hawaii, and uh, no rooms available, uh, couldn't do it. Nah, yeah. Okay, whatever, Hilton, I'm not that loyal. And then I keep on seeing a Hilton ad, and there's a little button that says turn off, I don't really see that. So now I'm being reminded of my, my problem, right? <laughs> so like, I already got my solution, but now the Hilton ad is in my face. So I'm yeah. actually against Hilton right now in my mind. I'm like, that's a bad user experience. Now, the numbers are off the charts because I clicked through once. Yeah. No, so they don't know to turn that off. Yeah. A little okay. cognitive issue so, there. Th that's true. I mean, you know. I don't we, mean to rail on yeah. retargeting some good, good technical things. I mean, the, the, the statistical truth is that people that visit a website are four to 10 times more likely to buy that product than the average internet user. And quite often, someone will visit the website, didn't find exactly what they wanted, but they'll come back later. So, you know, retargeting can be a little bit annoying. I think it's important to manage the frequency so it's not overwhelming. But to your point, right, to your point, that is that the contextual nature of the transaction that did or did not happen yeah. is important to capture that moment of data yeah. and then recycle that back into the user experience. That's my whole point. Retargeting definitely. is good, it don't definitely. get me wrong, there's intent there, but they're not closing the loop, they're not saying, well, okay, well he didn't really get he what he wanted, so wanted. now give me the, hey, thanks for coming to Hilton, here's a better place for you, here's a coupon. I mean, I mean they could yeah. get smarter there, I'm just saying, but. No, definitely, I mean, it's something that, that DataZoo can do through its dynamic creative system. Uh, you can intelligently wire it up to rules. So if you search for hotels in Hawaii that didn't come up, uh, maybe they'll give you hotels in somewhere else or uh, back off. <laughs> All right, so how many customers do you guys have? What's your, what's your profile? Big brands, yeah. uh, agencies, who uses your product? So DataZoo is live in 50 countries around the world. Uh, we have over 500 customers, uh, ranging from direct brands that want to run things in-house to uh, agency partners that run, not represent multiple brands. Uh, our biggest areas are in automotive, uh, in financial, and in uh, consumer packaged goods. And uh, however, you know, we work in travel and retail and every other vertical. Talk about engagement. What's the technology aspect and what's the, the engagement market? Because that's the holy grail right now is engagement. What's going on in the quote engagement area? What are the hot things to watch? Yeah, so I think in digital, the most exciting thing happening in terms of engagement, and in terms of engaging customers, is really video. Like, I think marketers are starting to learn that digital video is a very engaging format. You know, people are waiting to watch their YouTube video. And the Cube. They're focused on it, <laughs> or the Cube. <laughs> and they're very focused on, on uh, you know, what, they're, what they're looking at. So it's an opportunity to really talk to the person. Well, Bright Roll just got bought by Yahoo for almost a billion dollars, I think, 670 yeah. or something, 670 million. Yeah, digital almost. video is a major area of growth. I think, you know, so our system is able to optimize Yeah, but no spend. one likes pre-rolls. Well, that is true. I know. It's you got to pay the bills somehow. Yeah, it's true. I think, I like, I like the idea of skippable pre-rolls, um, you know, and sometimes you'll see something you're interested in and sometimes you won't, but it gives you the option. What's going on in the technology? What's your relationship with Amazon? Tell, talk more about that. So uh, we use a, a whole host of services, like I said, and um, we, we get a, um, a personal touch. You know, whenever we have any questions, Amazon is uh, ready to help us. Even though we are, a, uh, you know, uh, a customer with uh, you know appetite, we, we grow. We have ambitious plans, and uh, Amazon is helping us uh, every step of the way. Um, what about on the business side? Are you guys in the marketplace, or we're not in the marketplace today? Um, it's a, you know, our product is, has, comes with a um, heavy services component to it. I mean, digital marketing is fairly complicated. I think it's not as simple as something that would appear in the Amazon marketplace for you know, 22 cents an hour. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you guys probably charge a good, good arm and a leg for that. It's good value, certainly having that data. But I got to ask you about the, again, let's go back to the transformation, both technically and from a business market landscape standpoint. Um, social media, obviously, is huge. Um, IBM's big on social business. 
which is a, to me an indicator of the trends. I mean, IBM kind of pioneered the word e-business back in the web days, which you know, no one talks about e-business anymore, it's all e-business, right? So it's not even a word anymore. Social business is interesting because it teases out social media being kind of a gimmicky, kind of buzz oriented in the crowd kind of flavor to business process. Yep. Where people are starting to operationalize this new normal of digital, yeah. which is different. You got OAuth logins, not so much clickstream data, the first party data equation is different. Um, what's your view on, what's your take on this transformation? More social networks are popping up than ever. I mean, you got the big three or four now, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and then you're going to have you know, a series of smaller networks, if you will, I guess. Call them networks, call them user yeah. groups. No, I what's the social business operational plan look like for a company? Or are there too yeah, early? Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely critical. Uh, you know, the, you know, there's, it's a very clear statistics that you know, it's very important to influence the influencers. So, and through social networks that are uh, digital, not, not the traditional like going to church kind, you can very easily measure who's an influencer and you can target them. So you, you're able to use uh, digital signals and social networks to help reach your customers and get good recommendations and references. I think it's you know it's a part of business you just can't ignore today. You have to have how would you peg strategy. how would you peg the inning first inning game's not even started. It seems early. I mean, op yeah. operationalizing a new transformation is really difficult. But the motivations there I'm seeing for customers that like okay I get it, but where's the data? I need ROI. So ROI becomes the real gate for scale. Yeah. Because on social, where is the ROI? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, more leads. Is that it's Twitter handle? Is that their email address? Wait, no one uses email anymore. Or the young, so they, well, they use email, of course you're saying, but like the whole younger generations, you know, they have a zillion emails, like, of course, yeah. that's like text messages. So the, the environment's changing. What's your take on that? How early, where is it? What are your customers telling you? Yeah, I, I think social is very early. Uh, if there's some tools that are useful, I think there's a lot of reluctance to use, say, a Facebook login to connect to your business. Um, I think that there's not a really strong, I mean, LinkedIn is a good business social network, but it's not connected to the applications well. It's sort of a reference dictionary. I go there to search for my connections, but I don't use a LinkedIn login to connect different applications I'm using. I think there's still a lot of competition there. I know Google- You like mean for the identity there. Yeah, piece. the identity management and, and automatically knowing who you are, who you're connected to, to make work more efficient and uh, B2B operations more efficient. I, I think maybe if you ask which inning, I'd say third inning. Yeah. We're very early. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's a zero, zero game at this point. Obviously, no one's really knocking it out of the park, but there's movement. You're seeing early yeah. adopters. Um, you're seeing some technology. Um, it's interesting, I see digital as taking a, a, a very cloud-like trajectory. All the things I, and, and I want to get your take on this technically, because, and, and what you guys think, because the buzzwords I'm hearing in digital, in terms of like the next generation, all sound like cloud automation, orchestration, uh, service levels. Yeah. So in a way, ad tech or just digital or is SaaS. Yeah. Technically, will be SaaS. Right, yeah. So a lot of those challenges are the same, aren't they? Oh, definitely. I, it, you know, when we started this business, I was amazed at how much manual work was going into uh, digital advertising. It's very much like running a data center. You know, Hands-on manipulation of each and every line item or server. Um, you know, you people had to run spreadsheets to make sure things are running correctly. It's a it's a big mess. It's very manual, and people may know of things they could do to optimize, but they don't have time. They can't react fast enough. It's what? sort of like a you know a self healing. You know, you need self healing systems in the cloud. You need self healing healing systems in digital. You know, if some machine learning is a crazy, is an amazing tool for for targeting, right? If you know what you're looking for, right. <laughs> no, teaching the machine how to learn is um, a great tool. You find what you want. Yeah. Definitely, I think you know the you know data zoo is not out to like optimize out everybody working in, in marketing. It's we're getting rid of all the tedious stuff so that people can work on more creative stuff. You That's, can tell I'm pretty geeking geeking out on this stuff because I, I, I study yeah. it pretty heavily. So in the old days, contextual and behavioral were the two real things that people pivoted on, not other things, but generally those were two big variables. What's going on in the behavior and on the site, whatever, and then context, contextual, advertising, whatnot. 
So, okay, I got that. So last night I was talking to a VC here, and I'm like, he's like, and I was explaining to my vision, I'm like, well, th that worked, but now let's go into the new transformation where data is the asset. Right. So there's two data types, this is my thesis, passive and active. Yep. You can all get data passively and then do stuff with it. Active data is pure gold. Yeah. That's interactions on the spot in real time. Right. Do you guys agree, do you see that that could be the new pivot points? Yeah, I, I have, um, you know, I think, you know, early 2000s was sort of the, the era of big data, big data management. I think uh, Hadoop came in and S3 came in and people can manage big quantities of data pretty well. Uh, they can ETL it pretty well. I think, you know, the next wave was really insights and analytics. Hey, we have a lot of data, can we run insights? I, I, I don't, I call the third wave really activated data, like big action, like taking automated action against the big data and, and, and the insights you're generating because nobody has time for it, all the analytics we're producing now. People produce so much analytics, it's overwhelming. You can't react to it fast enough. So I, it's like yeah. that scene in office space where the guy's got the big reports, the TPS reports. No yeah. one has time. You no need, one can you need that. data for the data. <laughs> you, you, need the, you need a system that takes action on the TPS reports. Right? Yeah, That's I mean, I think the other big thing is the, is the continuous data, which is a data that has no end, it keeps on flowing. And uh, so that's the real-time data, and, and the loop, being able to zoom into that continuous data into the minutes uh, of windows, and, and being, uh, being able to identify the uh, patterns, I think is a, is a big Well nice guys, issue. I really think that you guys are a secret weapon, and I think you guys got to get the word out. I, think I love your business model. I think you're way ahead of the curve, certainly on many levels, and the market will just, you're where the puck is coming, as they say. And also a big fan of uh, Atlas and Chris Lynch and, and uh, those guys, Jeff. Great investors, so congratulations. Um, you should get together meeting with Jeff Kelly. He's a yep. big data analyst, you should chat with him. Also, we should show you our new crowd chat application, which is a, an engagement application that sits out in the crowd layer for chats. Yeah. Um, but it'd be perfect for you guys, feed into your, yeah, into sounds your great. system. So, sounds great, yeah. um, really think you've got the great vision for that. The marketing cloud is still this term that's, you know, Oracle certainly pumped the hell out of it at Oracle Open World. I don't know if you saw what was going on there. Yeah, thank you, Oracle. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, thanks thank for you. educating the market. They don't have anything, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate it. Um, URL, places to go to find information, share with the folks. Yeah, uh, sure. Information. Uh, you can visit datazoo.com. We have a number of videos on Data Zoo X U. Data Zoo, not Zoo, Zoo as in yeah. San Diego Zoo. Yes. Data Zoo. Data Zoo. Yes. And right. uh, we have a number of uh, white papers and videos that you can watch to yeah. learn more. Great, we should follow up on another conversation. This is really good, 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 good chat, very relevant. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. We'll be, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back after the short break. We're talking digital transformation, we're talking cloud transformation. It's a cloud world and, and it's very disruptive and it's awesome, so we'd love sharing that with you. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>